I will turn it over to Dr. Glom, who's going to talk to us about the safety of pre-hospital medical clearance for pediatric behavioral health emergencies. Thank you, Dr. Glom, for being here today. Great. Thank you very much. And thank you all. Good morning and good afternoon from the Bay Area. Uh, it's such an honor to be invited to speak today, recognizing EMS for Children program and uh, EMS Week. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Um, so uh, yes, I'll be talking about the uh, project that we recently conducted here in the Bay Area, the safety of pre-hospital medical clearance for pediatric behavioral health emergencies. Uh, next slide. Uh, I would like to thank our research team, uh, Drs. Uh, Tarek Trevetti, Jacqueline Grupp Phelan, David Schreiger, and Carl Spohr. A uh, really phenomenal team that I've been able to work with and continue to work with on other projects. So thank you to all of them for their uh, help. Next slide. Uh, we went over uh, the objectives just a minute ago, but briefly uh, we'll be doing an overview of pediatric behavioral health emergency care, uh, describe some of the demographic characteristics in EMS usage in Alameda County, California, and then examine the safety of outcomes of pediatric patients directly transported to pediatric psychiatric emergency services using an EMS pediatric behavioral protocol. And then we'll discuss future steps to improve pediatric behavioral health emergency care. Next slide. So for background for this study, uh, so 30% of all pediatric behavioral health emergency related emergency department visits in the United States arrive by EMS and 15% of EMS transport in the United States are mental health related. We all know right now, especially with the COVID pandemic, that the United States has experienced an increase in pediatric behavioral health emergencies, and it's actually outpacing the rate of growth of adult visits for behavioral health emergencies by 30%. And a majority of emergency department visits for behavioral health emergency are unnecessary since most patients do not receive any medical or psychiatric treatment in the emergency department. On top of this, we know that Children with behavioral health emergencies are spending days, sometimes weeks in the emergency department, not getting the care that they need. Behavioral health emergency patients are sent to the emergency department, um, often resulting in significant uh, use, uh, utilization of resources in the emergency department and use of valuable clinical space. So what our team did is really set out to study the safety of a pediatric behavioral health emergency protocol developed to uh, basically medically clear behavioral health emergency patients in the field and transport them directly to an emergency psychiatric care facility. Next slide. So our study, uh, we actually conducted a study in Alameda County, which is on the East Bay. Alameda County has a population of 1.6 million. Alameda County EMS responds to approximately 125,000 calls and transports approximately 90,000 patients each year. They maintain a database ESO solutions of all EMS encounters. Uh, and Benioff Children's Hospital Oakland, former, uh, uh, formerly Children's Hospital Oakland, is a designated level one trauma center for Alameda County. Next slide, please. In Alameda County, uh, California, patients uh, that are found to be a danger to themselves or to others are placed on an involuntary hold or IVH. Uh, Alameda County has the highest rate of involuntary hold detentions in all of California. Uh, Alameda, e Alameda EMS uses a field screening protocol empowering pre-hospital providers to identify low-risk children with behavioral health emergencies who can be medically cleared in the field and transported directly to a regional psychiatric emergency service center, um, therefore bypassing the emergency department. Next slide. So this is a summary of the Alameda, Alameda EMS protocol. So all patients, all behavioral health emergency patients um, are required to be transported to an emergency department, therefore would not be allowed to be sent to the psychiatric emergency department. If they're less than 12 years old, um, any patient with any medical complaint, and that includes ingestions, vomiting, a report of no food or fluid intake for more than 16 hours, 
Um, any kids with known chronic medical conditions, if they have depressed level of consciousness, if their heart rate is greater than 120 or blood pressure greater than 190 over 110, um, or if the child has been outside of adult supervision for more than 24 hours. And all behavioral health patients, uh, all other behavioral health patients can potentially be transported directly to a psychiatric emergency service. And this protocol um, is gonna be uh, in the slide deck at the end of the presentation for more information. And we can also provide um, uh, the, the link in the chat. Uh, next slide. For our study objectives, we look to examine the safety outcomes of pre-hospital medical clearance of pediatric behavioral health patients and directly transporting uh, to pediatric psychiatric emergency services using this EMS behavioral health emergency field screening protocol. And then we described the mortality of patients being transported directly to the psychiatric emergency services. Next slide. So how did we do this? Uh, we did a retrospective review uh, for all pediatric patients less than 18 years old um, and looked at all EMS encounters between 2011 and 2016 using Alameda County's data set. Uh, Alameda County's EMS data set, uh, like many EMS data sets, is encounter-based uh, and does not include a variable to uniquely identify patients. Therefore, we developed a probabilistic based matching strategy to identify unique patients in this large uh, data set. We then linked the Alameda EMS data set to mortality data from the Alameda County Vital Statistics. Uh, and we identified the proportion of patients who were found to have a medical issue requiring retransport to emergency department after arriving at the psychiatric emergency services. Next slide. So for our results, I want you to focus on uh, the highlighted left side of this graph. Uh, in summary, the, out of 38,241 total pediatric EMS encounters during the study period, approximately 25% were for behavioral health emergencies, making it the second most common transport behind trauma. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. All right, and the bars to the far right demonstrate the significant number of pediatric behavioral health patients that utilize the EMS system at more than one point in time. So during the study period, there were 208 children who had five or more involuntary holds placed by EMS, accounting for almost 21% of all of the involuntary hold encounters. Next slide, please. So of the 7,670 pediatric patients placed on involuntary hold and encountered by EMS, 41% of them met the EMS protocol criteria for behavioral health emergency and were medically cleared in the field and transported directly to the local psychiatric emergency service center. A total of 15 patients or 0.5% ended up requiring a retransport back to the emergency department within 24 hours of arrival to the psychiatric emergency service. And the reason for these transports are listed in the chart uh, at the lower part of this slide. Um, when linking the data to Alameda County Vital Statistics data set, we found that there were 17 involuntary hold patients that died during the study period, and only one involuntary hold patient died within 90 days of an EMS involuntary hold encounter. And that patient was uh, greater than 70 days from the encounter. Next slide, please. So the limitations of this project is that, you know, we suspect that there are definitely some regional differences in the severity and the types of pediatric behavioral health emergencies, uh, which could influence the safety of a field medical clearance uh, protocol like the one in Alameda County. Um, there is a possibility of possibly underreporting in the identification of retransports, which would prove to be failures in field medical clearance. Uh, and the protocol really only allowed for 
diversion for children uh, greater than or equal to 12 years of age, uh, leaving almost 11% of all pediatric patients that were placed on an involuntary hold during the study period ineligible for transport to the pediatric psychiatric emergency services. And unfortunately, there was no data on other outcomes after admission or discharge from the psychiatric emergency services. And we encountered limitations, unfortunately, in understanding the cause of death for the 17 pediatric behavioral health patients who died during the study period. And unfortunately, this is due just to the inability to obtain the cause of death um, from the Alameda County uh, vital statistics. Next slide. So in conclusion, EMS, uh, this EMS behavioral health uh, protocol uh, was safe as measured by the low rates of retransport and death during the study period. Patients who had at least one involuntary hold really disproportionately used the EMS system. And then utilizing the protocols established by Alameda County EMS, we know that 41% of pediatric patients with behavioral health emergencies were directly transported to the regional pediatric psychiatric emergency services, therefore bypassing medical clearance in the emergency department. And then failed diversion as measured by EMS retransport to the emergency department within 24 hours was extremely rare, occurring in only 0.5% of encounters taken directly to the pediatric emergency service. So as far as, no, I'm sorry, next slide. As far as next steps, um, this and similar protocols can significantly decrease the burden on local emergency departments, and most importantly, can allow for a more timely mental health evaluation for these pediatric patients. Um, we will certainly need to identify counties in the United States that have an existing pediatric emergency services, knowing that not every county has this available. And then the plan would be to develop further studies uh, to prospectively study this or similar EMS behavioral health field screening protocols. Some agencies certainly may have limitations in their ability to transport directly to a pediatric emergency service. And this can, might be either because of reimbursement issues or requirements of having an ALS provider available at the receiving facility. So we need to be creative and innovative in our approach. Um, and there are possibly utilizing, um, there are many EMS uh, organizations that are coming up with community assessment and transport teams. Alameda County is one of those that has recently developed uh, uh, such a program. And these consist of a behavioral health provider and a paramedic responding to behavioral health emergencies. So it is certainly possible that with these teams now responding to behavioral health emergencies in the field, this may improve the rate of transport to psychiatric emergency services. And knowing that every county in the United States does not have a, uh, a pediatric uh, or psychiatric emergency services or sufficient bed of availability for uh, psychiatric emergency services, the goal of this project really is to drive policy and legislature uh, to increase funding for psychiatric emergency services for children. Next slide, please. So thank you very much uh, for providing me this opportunity to, to speak with you about this project and would love to uh, know of any questions or comments. Um, I'm also available via email listed on the bottom of the slide.